Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up this week is an awesome adapter from Retro Access. This is basically a SCART port inverter thing so that you can have your RGB SCART cables coming out the back of a RetroTank 5X Pro. This adapter should be handy for anybody who's using RGB SCART with your RetroTank 5X Pro, especially if you have it in like a media center or something where you kind of want the ports coming out the back of it. Now they didn't mention it in the tweet at all, but they're actually already available on the Retro Access website. You can get the Fortiflex versions now, but you'll have to wait to get the nice thick coax cable until they release those coax cables on Sundays usually. Now, in my opinion, these are a little bit expensive. However, it doesn't seem like this is a straightforward cable. It seems like they made some kind of a custom PCB, and obviously these are hand built, so not made in a factory anywhere. And from my experience, these Retro Access cables are probably some of the best SCART cables that you can buy. So if you want a really high quality adapter so that you can use SCART cables coming out the back of your RetroTank 5X Pro, this in my opinion is probably the way to go. Next we have this really awesome looking case from Jason Hicks. This is for the CPS3 arcade system. Now I know literally zero about the CPS3. I thought that these cases were really awesome. I mean I know it's just metal painted but I'm a really big fan of this sort of industrial design of just straight lines and bent metal and the color schemes are really awesome. I really like this blue and yellow here. They're available for for purchase now and there's a bunch of different colors. Now this case doesn't just fit the CPS3 board itself, it actually has room for some different mods. And like I said, I don't really know that much about it, but it looks like it has support for this HDMI mod, which is that CPS2 digital AV mod. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be buying one of these because the CPS3, as far as I know, only has like six or something games. And I'm not really a big arcade fan in the first place, but I figured I would mention it because I really like the design and if you are a CPS3 fan, or if you just want to collect arcade hardware for use at home, this is the best looking case, in my opinion, that you can get for the CPS3. Next, we have this project shared by Arcade Projects. This is the Pico Mem card for the PSX. It looks like it's a DIY USB memory card. Let's go to the GitHub here and check it out. It runs off of a Raspberry Pi Pico. That's where the name comes from. And if we scroll down a little bit, it looks like there are two options to assemble this thing. The first is to hack up one of those really cheap PlayStation 1 memory cards kind of just wiring directly to that. So that seems like a cool option if you are new to soldering, you wanna mess around with some mods for the PlayStation 1. That seems like a really cool option. The second option here looks like a custom PCB that you can actually mount the Raspberry Pi Pico into and it looks like it has PlayStation memory card finger, so it just connects directly to that. As far as features, it looks like it can simulate a PlayStation 1 memory card, I would hope, because it plugs into the memory card slot. It uses the USB connection on the Raspberry Pi Pico, which I think is a really clever use reuse of that Raspberry Pi because if you're gonna have a USB port anyways you might as well just use the one that's on the Raspberry Pi so you can use that to connect the Pi to the computer to import and export saves. It also looks like it can enable playing burn CDs on the PSX using free PSX boot. I'm not sure if there are other ways of using this free PSX boot. If you know anything about that or playing burn CDs in a PSX let me know in the comments below and obviously it probably would be cheaper than buying a real memory card on eBay. It's probably not cheaper than buying one of those cheap ripoff Chinese PlayStation 1 memory cards. But hey, for a fun DIY project that you can kind of put together yourself, I think that is a cool idea. Next, we have this pretty awesome looking Game Gear kind of consoleizer case from Pointer Function. It looks like it uses eTim's Game Gear TV mod, which if we go over there is just a, an RGB output for the Game Gear. It allows you to get RGB output, S video, and composite video out of the Game Gear. But if we look at the renderings here, there are two VGA looking, these are probably just DB9 connectors in the front. I wonder if those are supposed to be for Sega Genesis controllers. I know the Game Gear TV mod doesn't have anything to do with adding controllers to the Game Gear. So if Pointer Function really did find a way to add Genesis style controller input to the Game Gear, I don't see why this couldn't be a cool Game Gear consoleizer using that eTIM mod. This is pretty cool. I would love to see more internal pictures of this so that we can really tell what's going on. And I'm really interested in that Game Gear kind of controller input. So if that mod is floating around, I would love to know about that too. 
And last but not least, let's take a look at this interesting Famicom board. This looks like a replacement motherboard for the Famicom, except for you'll notice that there's only one chip here for the Famicom CPU. I'm not sure if the Famicom itself has both a CPU and a PPU, but this board doesn't have that. It has an FPGA up here. So this post caught my eye and I scrolled down to the comments and I saw a listing here on AliExpress. And if you look who posted that, it's GDZJHGQ, if you remember them from from a couple of weeks ago, I talked about their Genesis Model 3 replacement motherboard. They actually just recently posted about the case for that same board. It's this cool looking kind of frosted acrylic case. But anyways, let's take a look at their AliExpress page. So here's that Famicom board here. Looks like you can buy the case separately, the board without a CPU separately. So if you already had a Famicom that was in rough shape, maybe you could donate the CPU from that into this. But I'm unsure if that board will fit in an original Famicom system or if you have to use their case with that board. Or you could buy the whole package, the board and the case and a CPU for $300 here. It uses some kind of FPGA to do the video output. It has a Sega Saturn RGB output. Here's a close up picture of the board. You have the VGA in the top here, the Saturn video output, looks like an audio output and it's powered by a USB port. But other than the information on the AliExpress page here, I'm not sure if this is a high quality product or not. I think it's a little bit expensive for everything at $300 and it's not like it's a DIY kit or anything other than maybe plugging the CPU into the socket. But let's check out the other stuff on their AliExpress store. Looks like they have some OSSC cases, a couple of different Mr. cases. They have this listing for a Mega Drive Lite. We could check that out in a second. This Mr. JAMA adapter looks like it's only compatible with this specific kind of case. Maybe it gets supported by this acrylic enclosure. And I'm not sure if this is a clone of anything else. Now, I'm not accusing this Retro Castle seller of that. I just thought that this was pretty interesting. And here's that Mega Drive Lite. I think I've seen this before. It's not a replacement board for the Genesis or anything, but it looks like it uses some of the chips maybe from a, an original Genesis. Yeah, it looks like it uses an original chip from some Genesis version. I'm not really sure. I think this is a pretty cool board. It might not fit the slot of somebody who's looking for original hardware. I'm glad to see people try to innovate and make a new product. I kind of wish it was a DIY kit so I could put one together myself, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see if anyone's brave enough to buy one of these and test it and compare it to a real Famicom. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.